Just in time for the Christmas season. Joining us online is Dallas Jenkins. He's creator of The Chosen, the first ever multi-season TV show about the life of Jesus. The first two episodes of season three just finished top three in the box office. Box office. They've been releasing it in theaters. And season three will be released this month on The Chosen app. Dallas, thanks so much for joining the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. So Dallas, let's talk about the shocking success of this show. It, it was basically ignored by the mainstream media. It is a massive success on every available level. Massive ratings, huge following. You're now releasing it in theaters and making money that way. How exactly did you build your own ecosystem outside of Hollywood? Well, yeah, the answer in some ways is in the question. I mean, the decision was clearly Hollywood is not going to be that interested in it. And I was coming off of a career failure myself and people weren't lining her up, up around the, the block to do a Jesus show. So uh, the decision was made to do it through crowdfunding. Now, I didn't think it would work. This was actually an idea from Angel Studios. And uh, but when we shattered the all time crowdfunding record, raising $10 million from 16,000 investors around the world, uh, that allows you the right. And you know this as well as anyone. It gives you the right to control your own destiny. Uh, you know, Hollywood's golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. And so when you when you are the one that's uh, controlling the gold, you're also the one who makes the rules. And so that's what allowed us to kind of maintain this underground outsider status. And Dallas, one of the things that's kind of amazing is how little of this sort of content has been presented to the, the Western public over the course of the last 40 years. If you go back 50, 60 years, you used to see Hollywood producing this kind of stuff all the time. And Ben-Hur won a massive number of Oscars because it was a movie that was largely about the origins of Christianity. You had movies like The Robe that were about the origins of Christianity. I mean, there were tons of these films that were coming out in the 40s, 50s. And then it sort of died off in the 60s with the, with the decline of religion in the West. And, and now this is a wildly underserved audience. It's pretty incredible that, that nobody, just for the money of it, has decided to get into this business. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, from a strictly financial perspective, you'd think there would be more attention given towards it. But that's the thing. And this is one of the things that I say when when we when, when sometimes we we complain about Hollywood is I sometimes say, well, uh, if they don't know what they don't know, I mean, and that's not necessarily their fault. I mean, I, that's sometimes can be our fault. I mean, we uh, those of us in the faith based community haven't necessarily used uh, Hollywood to our advantage like other people have. And so I think there is a piece of uh, sometimes you have to do things yourself and and like you guys have done, sometimes you have to create your own industry as well. Sometimes you have to create your own ecosystem. And so you can't always rely on the gatekeepers. Now, I don't know all of the rules, all the reasons why uh, <laughs> this hasn't happened, but I think sometimes it's because people in Hollywood don't necessarily come from our background and uh, that that's okay. That's not their fault. That's what they've chosen. And uh, so I think we've in many ways had to do it ourselves instead of waiting around. I'd like to compare it to uh, the, the concept of you know, back in the day when the king would lower his scepter to allow you into his hallowed hall, uh, instead of waiting around for someone else to lower the scepter, sometimes you have to just go ahead and create your own hallowed hall. So Dallas, how exactly did you go about telling the story of Jesus? Obviously, there are a bunch of different perspectives on Jesus, ranging from the Gospels themselves, because there, there are several of them, there are four of them, uh, as well as the the you know sort of historical evidence regarding Jesus. So how do you construct a story around the most obviously visible and maybe important story of all time? Well, we, we do start with the Bible. That is our primary source of truth and inspiration. But in our show, because it's a multi-season show, this isn't a movie or miniseries where you have a little less time. Most of those go from miracle to miracle, Bible verse to Bible verse. Well, we're constructing a, a multi-season show where you have more time to develop some backstories and cultural context, historical context. So we start with the Bible, but then there's also, as you know, many, many uh, other historical documents about that time period. And and so we, we start with documents and, you know, cultural context, you know, historical context, and then it's a lot of artistic imagination. And I personally, of course, as a believer, want to never contradict the character or intentions of Jesus in the Gospels. Um, so when I start with that as the premise, then even the artistic imagination we apply to it and the time that we have to take building the characters, building the backstory, building the context, I'm still operating it through that lens. So not everything in the show is fact, of course. It is a fictionalized account. Uh, and some people call it fan fiction. I think that's a fair, a fair st uh, uh, claim because I am a fan. Uh, but... Uh, we are still trying to make sure that we stay within certain boundaries. We don't want to contradict the character and intentions, even if at times we're doing things that we don't know are fact. We'll get to more on this in just one moment. First, look your best this holiday season with GenuCell skincare. Now through Christmas, GenuCell's most popular package is 70% off. This includes two months worth of GenuCell's bestsellers, plus their hyaluronic acid serum free 
with your purchase. I got GenuCell years ago. My wife used it. My mom still uses GenuCell. A lot of people in my family use GenuCell because, frankly, it makes them look better. GenuCell uses a proprietary base with clinical levels of botanical extracts, which come together to yield amazing results. GenuCell products are natural, cruelty-free, and made in the United States. Treat yourself and a loved one to the skincare that'll take years off your skin. Watch those forehead wrinkles, fine lines, skin redness, pesky bags, and puffiness disappear right before your eyes with GenuCell's most popular collection. You'll see immediate effects in less than 12 hours, guaranteed, or your money back. Visit GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Use code Shapiro for an additional 10% off your order. Plus, every order is instantly upgraded to free express shipping. That's GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. It's spelled G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash Shapiro. You can make a lot of those problems you got with your own face. Look a lot better with GenuCell. Head on over to GenuCell.com slash Shapiro today. So Dallas, one of the key issues in the show, obviously, is that Jesus is a Jew. So how do you deal with the, the Judaism of Jesus and the Jewishness of the people who surround him, the sort of Christian versus Jew dichotomy in the show? How do you how do you do that? Well, that's what's really interesting. Um, I th- this is probably the most Jewish show in the world, yeah, even though I'm a Gentile and a, a Christian. But Jesus was Jewish; his followers were Jewish. It's an extraordinarily Jewish story. In fact, uh, even those who don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, which is obviously the the the, the viewpoint of the majority of uh, Jewish people, uh, can still and we've heard from from tens of thousands of Jewish people, many of whom, again, aren't believers who've said they appreciate the attention to the Jewish faith. Uh, I think sometimes there's a misconception that Jesus came along and said, all right, uh, I'm going to upset the apple cart to the point where I'm, I'm going to actually turn the whole Jewish faith on its head. He actually didn't. He was a practicing Jew. He was an observant Jew. He went to synagogue. He prayed the prayers, the morning and evening prayers. We show all of that. It's been a fascinating thing. In fact, many, many uh, evangelical Christians have said that because of the show, they are now doing some of those practices. They're trying Shabbat. They're trying uh, to go to synagogue. They're trying these morning prayers. They're asking questions about the things that you see in the show. So I think that's something that's been interesting about the show is the the Jewish Christian uh, connection has actually increased because of the show. And I think the media sometimes assumes, oh, Christians, they're they're going to be more prone to anti-Semitism because of the whole uh, the Jews killed Jesus, uh, you know, uh, myth. And uh, yes, obviously, Jewish people were responsible for Jesus's death, but partially because they were uh, thinking that uh, that he was you know, blaspheming their faith, but in many ways he was also honoring the faith. So it's 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 a very nuanced concept, one that we're able to explore more because it's a multi-season show. We have the time to do so. I was being with Dallas Jenkins, creator of the shows in the first ever multi-season TV show about the life of Jesus. So Dallas, how exactly do you go about casting a show like this? I mean, obviously when you had The Passion of the Christ, Jim Caviezel became, he was already a, a relatively large Hollywood star, but he became kind of globally enormous after that. How do you go about casting Jesus? Well, I actually met uh, Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus, uh, almost 10 years ago. I was actually doing a short film for my church about the crucifixion. And uh, this is where The Chosen, actually, the ideas started to get birthed. I was doing these short films and vignettes for my church in Illinois. And uh, that's where I first cast Jonathan. And, and the thing is, when you're casting for a short film, or in the case, even in the case of The Chosen, when we were kind of outside the system a little bit, no one knew who we were, you don't have the pressure of trying to cast a little, like a big movie star for any of the roles. And my my concept going into it was the story is the star. So we're going to cast the best people for the role. Now, when you're casting for the best people in the role of, that, uh, of a show that takes place in first century Galilee, the concept of Europeans, you know, white people, traditional white people just doesn't make sense. And that's actually one of the things that I think has actually caused a little bit of this divide over the years, uh, sometimes even between Christians and Jews, is because the portrayal of Jesus has oftentimes been Aryan, this, you know, white European, and that's not accurate. We're trying to make an accurate show. So we're looking for people who look ethnic, who have olive skin or dark skin. That's kind of our, uh, our our operating principle in addition to talent. So when you're actually going for the best person for the job regardless, and you're not looking for any other uh, this, uh, concept besides that, you're looking for people who fit the role, and that's going to be in look and in uh, the level of charisma. So with, with, uh, with Jesus, the, the cool thing about Jonathan is he's got that combination of masculinity with gentleness, the combination of of humor, because uh, we're again we're going for a, a, an accurately human portrayal of this. So uh, it's been it's been challenging in the sense that you know we want to make sure that we're ethnically accurate, but at the same time it's been freeing. We're not trying to fit any other category. 
Well, that's Dallas Jenkins, creator of The Chosen. If you are a Christian or if you're just interested in the, in the New Testament, it is definitely worth the watch. Dallas, really appreciate the time and great to have you on the show. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting to California considering slavery reparations could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.